Hello there and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig. I'm with Beyond Us Games and in this Game Maker Studio tutorial I'm going to show you an elegant and simple way to warp or transition from room to room in your game. Now there's a lot of different ways to do this and if you watch any other tutorials they're going to have a unique system that they they use and I'm going to show you the way that I like best. I don't like to have a lot of objects or a specific warp for every single place you're going. It gets really unwieldy. So I have a way to just have one sprite, one object for warp, and that's all you need. So let me show you what we're going to be making in this tutorial. It's just a simple transition from room to room, and you can see here this is a unique room moving around, and I hit it, and now we're in a different room. And it's the same warp object but it takes me to somewhere new. So let's dive in and I'll show you how that's done. First, we're gonna need three sprites. So we're gonna need the player. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. We're just gonna make him really quick. Center him, new sprite. We're gonna create a floor so that you know that each room is unique. And just put an X through that, make it look real pretty. Center that one. And then we need a warp. What I like to do for this is to actually put in text that says warp. And there's a text box, right? Text button right here. And you can type in whatever you want. And warp fits in really nicely there. And then you can. Oh, wrong one. So you can fill in everything around it. And you can see there that you can read it pretty easily. You can center that one. And then we're going to go in and create an object for each one of these. So we'll create the player first. Select his sprite. The only thing the, sprite, the, the player needs to do this time around is move. Now I'm going to copy and paste some code in here for the player movement. If you're unfamiliar with it, go ahead and pause the video and you can look at it. It's just a efficient control scheme for the WASD using place free to check if you can move. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about that, feel free to leave them. Before we exit the, the player object, click persistent because he's gonna be moving from room to room. That's really important. Next, let's create the OBJ floor. And all we need to do here is assign the sprite and we're good to go. And lastly, the warp object. Now there are two events we need to make here, which is a create and a collision with the player. Okay? First, let's go into create. Now, normally when you make variables in an object, you have to assign them immediately. But what we're going to do this time instead is use var, which stands for variable, which then allows us to actually create some variables that you don't have to fill in immediately and you can make several along the same line. So you can see we have a target room, a target X, and a target Y. And we'll fill those in later, but you can see that they're all on the same line. It's really efficient, looks really nice. Then we're going to go into the collision and here we just need to do a, a few things. So um, always comment wisely. So we're going to put in the function room go to and it's going to be target room. Okay, it's the variable we created. It doesn't have uh, anything in it right now, but we're going to we're going to put something in it in just a minute. Then we're going to say the player dot x. So where he's at on the map with his x is the new target x. And the same thing for the player y. So when the player hits the object, these things happen. So you might be getting a picture of what exactly we're going to do here and how to make it work. Go ahead and make two rooms. Doesn't matter what you name them. Um, let's name them room zero and room one for simplicity's sake. Um, I'm just going to check mark those so that they, they actually change. Now, for room zero, go ahead and hit the objects tab, add in the player, create a floor, plan for whatever you like. I'm going to make something unique here that you, so that you can see um, that 
it's a unique room. Oop, I forgot to assign the sprite. My bad. So, okay, now we have that. Now we have a warp in there. And go ahead and do the same thing on the other room. You don't need to make a, a player, though. You don't want to do that. And now I'm making a unique room. That looks awful. But for what we're doing, you'll be able to tell that it's a unique room. So I'm going to add in the same warp, just one object for what we're doing. And the way that it works, the place the magic happens is when you right click on that warp object and click creation code. Now creation code is really powerful. It's a fantastic thing that can, you can do a lot with. And in this tutorial, I'm just going to show you that for when we create a warp, it's its own unique instance. Now, if you don't understand the difference between objects and instances, the quick explanation is that the object is what we create over here. So it is this right here. The instance would be what we actually place in the map. The way you think about it in real life would be a car is an object. Your car is an instance. It's a specific uh, model or specific uh, car that is yours that isn't just the idea of a car, it's actually a car. So when, once we're in creation code, go ahead and type out what I'm doing here. So target room, which you remember was a variable that we didn't actually set up, now we're going to assign it something, room one, which is our other room. And then we're going to assign target X to something and target Y to something. So we're hitting this one, hitting right here. That means we need to get the X and Y coordinates. So the X and Y coordinates over here are about 740, let's see, about 730. And if you can't see where that is, if you look in the bottom, near the, the bottom left of the window, you can see the X and Y coordinates changing as I move my mouse around. And that's where I'm getting it. And then we want about 406 for the Y. Oop. And then... When we go over here, we want to do the same thing. Right click, creation code, and this time we need to get um, the target room will be room zero, target X, and target Y. So we need to go over here and see the X is 350, 350 the Y is 330, and that's all you need to do. Go ahead and check both of those, click the play, and now you have a warping system that requires just one object, and you just create the, uh, the specific variables where they're going. So we hit this, we go to the new room, and same thing for that. And this is a really great system because it doesn't require a lot of management. Um, a lot of times you change rooms around as you're making the game, and so you just have to right click on this, change the creation code, put it where you want, and you don't have a lot of objects, you don't have a lot of overhead, it's just a really simple system, and it gets you from room to room and exactly where you're going. So, I hope that was helpful. Uh, please leave a comment, ask a question, give me a suggestion for any videos that you'd like to see. Uh, thanks for watching, and have a wonderful day.